Welcome to Dodge Chairlift Chats. Um, Tyler Wilkinson Ray, what a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. My my pleasure. Um, this is cool. I I, wa I recently watched um, your documentary that was that was what Powder Magazine's uh, documentary of the year. Yeah, yeah, they gave us the documentary of the years. Very cool. Yeah, tell tell me about that, and tell me about where you found your inspiration for the project. Um, so Aaron, who's the guy in the film, uh, approached me. Um, in the summer of 2015 saying that he was going to try to break this record that uh, a Canadian guy, Greg Hill, uh, had set, uh, I want to say in 2010. Um, so a couple of years earlier and, uh, which was 2 million human powered feet in the back country in the calendar year. Um, that was the, the current record and Aaron who I had known from, uh, from UVM, he was a uh, like a skier at UVM, not a racer, but just a, a passion skier. And uh, he said he, you know, was going to try to break this record and do it in the in the calendar year of 2016. So you know, start on January 1st, end on uh, the 30 December 31st, and uh, asked if I wanted to make the film about it. And uh, you know, it just seemed like it was going to be a wild ride and he had to chase snow all over the world to do it. And, um, you know, it just seemed like, you know, there's only a handful of really interesting, like authentic stories and events that happen in skiing every year. I feel like, and, you know, a lot of the sort of ski movie cycle, they sort of have to recycle the same concept over and over again. And this was going to be an interesting and sort of unique story. And, said yeah I'll, I'll make the film and started filming a little bit that summer but really as we got closer to january 1st ramped up filming and, and then i followed him for 2016 and i'd check in on him like maybe once a month or two times a month in the winter and and i chased him down to argentina uh for three weeks in august and then had to go back down in october when he broke the record um, and then caught up with him again at the very end of the year when he, when he finished. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, well, yeah. for sure. Well done on it. Uh, I remember uh, talking to you before you went down to Argentina, how you were like, how you're talking about balancing work and then passion projects. And I just really loved the way you kind of explained that. And I feel like so many of us struggle, um, through those different projects. And I don't know, I just wondered if you could touch on that a little bit how do you define them and how do you pick and navigate that yeah i mean so so the aaron film was a passion project um you know we did have some backers um who like covered the production costs because it was really expensive to make that film um and uh so luckily like i had that covered which is great and that i always even on passion projects i try to get like just the out of pocket because it just makes it when you know if you can break even on it like it feels okay to be donating your time to something you believe in versus like losing a bunch of money because uh, you just you gotta end up losing money anyways uh, <laughs> but uh, no i mean like like ideally you just do passion projects that's like what you want to be doing um and there's always a temptation to like just do another one do another one and i say like the pushback is like like I, I try to tell myself to only do one at a time uh, and try to finish one. And you also like when it's a passion project, generally there's not like a client who's like, I need this on like this date, you know? So it's like they can drag and that's a big problem. Um, you know, you can, you just have to, the nut, skiing is sort of nice because like you got to have it out in the fall, you know? Like you, you got to just like finish and have it out by the fall. So like you have, but you have the summer, so you have plenty of time, but um, so I try to do one at a time, try to get it out. And then, um, you know, you have to be doing, I'm going to just pause for a second. This person walk by. Sorry about that. Well, I've been skiing on them for three years. It's nice having a one quiver boot. No, I ski them everywhere in the back country, at the resort in the race course in the woods.
Skiing on the boots in the backcountry, dodge boots, one, are really light going up, and two, you've got a real solid boot, good stiffness, um, and a lot of precision going down. So there's really no sacrifice going up or down. In the race course or arc and turns on groomers, um, they just have a lot of precision. I find that skiing on a plastic boot, I don't have as much edge control and the uh, response is slower than it is in a dodge boot. <laughs> I gotta say though, when I when I did one with Roger like last week, um, yeah, I saw that. it was so loud on the lift. It was like I know. I was like, I was like oh man. What, what do you have for a camera for that? Like, a, just are you just using a little GoPro or something that's to hold what it I out? Use for that one, yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's tough with those. Like, the only way around that is to do, uh, uh, like, a, throw a lab on them inside his jacket and it'd be better. But yeah, those T bars are so loud. We, it's funny you you guys are doing that because we talked about doing like T bar chats, like, really? to, like get interesting people in the sport and just like riding up a T bar with them, because um, it's such like a you know the t-bar is such an intimate like you know you're just stuck next to this person for you know whatever seven minutes or something but yeah i can jump back into that um passion project question um you know i think once you like set your boundaries of like you know i can only do so many um you know you obviously have to have that like commercial work on the side and um that is like 80% of my time or sometimes more, sometimes 90. Um, you know, this Aaron film was, um, shot over two years and, uh, it was almost the only passion project I did during that time. And so that's like, just like a lot of time to, you know, be only working on one film. And that's why it's, you know, I sort of hope it pans out and, um, sort of hope it does well. Cause otherwise you're like, man, I just spent so much time working on this film that I didn't a, make any money on. And like, if it sucks, then it's just like defeating, but, um, yeah. And, you know, you just gotta like, first you gotta make sure you can pay your bills and then, and fill your, you know, pay off your equipment. And then you also got to make sure you're like, you're surviving as like a creative, um, like that you can keep that creative energy going. Cause some, some commercial work is fun and engaging and like you enjoy it, but, a lot of times, you know, you're doing what the client wants and that, you know, it's, you know, that you're do whatever they ask for, you, you do it. And sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's not. And so, um, you gotta like keep the creative soul alive and that's where like the passion projects come in. And, um, generally there's like five ones you want to do for every one that you can do. Um, and I think it's like been important for me to just like pump like pu like pump the brakes a little bit and pause and like pick up pick one do a really good job see it through and then go on to the next one as opposed to like jumping into eight projects and having all these because i'm just the type of person that'll do that and then i'll have to not finish it yeah. you know and like that's the worst if it's like sitting on a hard drive and you can't finish it and, and it this thing did take me a, like i didn't finish it until august really like once all the color and everything was like put together and like you know i finished filming it will really finish he finished this year on the 31st and i filmed a little bit that winter until april but three i could have had this thing out like a long time ago but i it just takes a long time it took, yeah. took probably a month to edit it wow so wow. And how much footage you end up having Ooh, i never counted time but uh the file like the the editing file is about like six and a half terabytes of, of footage. Wow. So I'm not sure how many hours, but it was a lot to go through. Oh, it's just a lot of little, you know, once you get going on, a, I actually had to, I had to start editing halfway through the film at some point. I just had to like, cause when you're starting out on a project like that, it's like, Oh, do you start in Argentina? Like do you want to start at the end and hook people like it? There's no way, there's no linear way to set it up. And I ended up going pretty linear in in how the film played out um and i sort of played around and maybe we'll start halfway through his year and try to hook people but um you know and there's all these different narratives of that you want to sort of loop in and you know we 
go and talk with the guy, the current record holder, Greg Hill, um, or at the time was the current record holder. Um, and so like how to piece all it's a puzzle. But once you sort of get halfway there, you know, then it's just plugging pieces in as they flow. But when you're first starting out, it's just like, oh, there's a million and a half ways I can, I can cut this up. And it's, that's the hard part. It's like, once you get going, you're like, okay, got it. You know, but the beginning sucks. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. What else should we touch on? Gosh, we're in 25 minutes in, so this is going to be fun to play with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah, what kind of chair? Are we on like a single chair? Like a matter of a single chair? You got like an hour here? Yeah, we're on two crappy <laughs> single chairs just struggling to make it anywhere. It's pretty shaky. Yours is pretty shaky too. Yeah, yeah. I think we're on wind hold right now, huh? <sighs> oh, that's about what it feels like. So I guess <laughs> Oh, so I guess I guess at that point we'll ask one more question. And cool. uh, so what's your next passion project? Uh, the next passion project is, um, so I've got a couple that I'm sort of not doing, my, following my own rule by doing one at a time. I'm working on a film right now about a, um, a Syrian kid, a kid from Aleppo who fled the war there, ended up in Lebanon um, and saw the ocean for the first time and saw people surfing. And so he taught himself how to swim and built a, a board out of trash on the beach and started surfing. And now he's sort of this up and coming surfer with his sights on the Olympics. So, um, we shot that in Lebanon in December. We're there for about three weeks. Um, and, uh, and we're going to start editing that like next or two weeks, maybe. And, uh, should be a cool film. Uh, I'm really excited about it. And, uh, that is one, um, I'm trying to do a film about uh, my great uncle who is trying to ski at 95. He skis every year and, um, but I'm not sure if he's actually going to be able to do it. Um, so we'll see if, if the film happens or not. But uh, um, that's the other passion project I'm working on. So, yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah, yeah totally. But right now, after shooting Lebanon, I got to go, like, make some money. Do some <laughs> work. Yeah, I hear that one. I that's, hear that one. That's where I'm at right now. It's a fun doing, balance. Doing commercial work. But it's cool. It's fun. Traveling's fun. So, yeah, saving up for the next one. Great. Well, what a pleasure. It's always good to see you. Yeah, um, you too, man. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll have to get on a real lift sometime soon <laughs> and uh, make yeah. some real runs or do some skinning or something. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs>